The fourth criminal indictment against former President Donald Trump will create even more difficulty for him to juggle court obligations with an election campaign underway. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. Trump and his 18 co-defendants have until Friday of next week to surrender on state charges of illegally trying to overturn the presidential results in Georgia. The district attorney wants to bring that case to trial in six months. Many legal observers say that is highly unlikely. Two other criminal cases already have tentative trial dates. The alleged hush money case in New York scheduled for March. The classified documents in Florida case scheduled for May. Even if those dates are changed, Trump will be in the midst of primary season and likely campaigning for the general election while dealing with court hearings and legal expenses. Fox 4 Sean Rabb in studio to take a look at the latest indictment and how this will all likely proceed. Sean. Yeah, it is a whole lot. The fourth indictment in five months, second in three weeks against the man who served as 45th president. Mr. Trump and some of the others now charged continue to call the legal challenges politically motivated. The sheer number of indicted in the Georgia case somewhat surprising. Nobody can say the case is a surprise, you know, that she filed it. I think many people, myself included, were surprised by the number of people who got indicted. I mean, there's 19 people, uh, you know, charged in this one instrument. The most significant part of the Georgia State racketeering case to many legal experts is its sheer size. The president and 18 others charged in connection with trying to overturn the 2020 election results. Unless you're going to hold it in the gym, you got a problem because uh, I've tried many a court case with seven, eight, nine defendants and people are sitting on top of each other. This is double that. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis likely not expecting all 19 in what she calls a criminal enterprise to go to trial in a case where probation is not an option. Given the fact that some defendants are running out of money, some defendants, uh, you know, are staring down the barrel of a mandatory minimum five-year sentence if they're convicted, uh, I think probably what the government expects here is that some members are going to peel off cut a plea deal and testify against the others. And of course, you've got a traffic jam not only in this case, but among the four cases. The next challenge for Georgia prosecutors with 90 plus charges against Mr. Trump in four cases is how to balance the time demands of their case with two federal indictments and the state charges in New York. Paul Coggins says prosecutors and judges in all cases will have to come to agreement and the feds don't necessarily get to go first. We have two sovereigns in this country, uh, the feds and the states. And uh, just because the feds are the feds, they don't get to dictate to the uh, state judge what uh, that state judge is going to do. But when the Georgia case goes to trial, if there is a conviction, it cannot be pardoned by that state's governor or a president. Those state cases may ultimately prove to be more problematic for uh, Trump down the line than even the federal cases. So the defendants have to turn themselves in by 12 noon on August 25th. They'll be processed with booking photos and fingerprints. Donald Trump has said he will hold a news conference next Monday to present a report on the alleged fraud he says took place to steal the 2020 election from him. All right, Sean Rabin, studio, thank you. All right.